Uh, my name is Weston Reuter. I am a CTO at XWP. I live here in Portland. I'm a core committer and a component maintainer for the customizer, so I work on it every day. I love it. I love the technology aspects of it, but I also love how it makes users' lives better. And I hope you'll agree with me <laughs> when you see what I'm going to show you. Uh, and as, as Karanda said, users don't care about uh, technology, they care about how of solutions and how those solutions make their lives better. So I want to get you excited about the customizer. As excited as he is about developers, I want you to be excited about customizer, 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 <laughs> customizer, okay? It may sound like that coming from me on Twitter or on the Make Core vlogs or if you're on the dev chats. Uh, how passionate about the customizer I am, um, and a lot of people don't agree with me and have vlogged and shared a lot of comments on the Make Core blogs and WP Tavern about how a customizer sucks. But uh, again, I disagree. WordPress uh, customizer has been in WordPress since 3.4, WordPress 3.4, June 2012. So it's over three years old. At the time that the customizer was introduced, uh, word, uh, custom, uh, the WordPress WordPress powered 15% of the web, and now 25%. Uh, so 25% uh, of the web have the opportunity to use the customizer uh, to make their websites easier to manage. Uh, this big blue button on the dashboard is the gateway into the customizer. So <laughs> if you hate the customizer, you probably don't click this button, but it is there for you to click, and it's very easy to click and I encourage you to do so. Uh, but <laughs> in the beginning of when the WordPress, when the customizer was first introduced into, into WordPress, all you could do with it is change the title and tagline, modify the colors on your theme, uh, set the background image, and then change the static uh, front page and post page. So you couldn't really do much anyway. So there wasn't really, uh, a lot of need to go into the customizer at all, and everything that you could do in the customizer, you could also do in the WP, ad, WP admin. So, really, there is no need to go into the customizer. Themes could add new settings to the customizer, but again, this is what it could do out of the box. So, for example, uh, header image you could set in the admin backend. And there was a, a sort of a preview there that would show for you. Same thing for background image. And this visualization, this preview though, is actually, as you probably have seen, isn't always very accurate to what you actually see on your site. But in order to see what it actually looks like, you have to save, and then you click this link, visit your site to see how it looks. So it's clear uh, kind of explaining that, hey, this isn't actually how it looks. You got to go to the front end to see how it actually looks. And while you do check it out, people are visiting your site and they're seeing something that may look broken. For example, <laughs> this uh, background image, which I uploaded and I thought, oh, this looks tiled like that. But actually, if you go to the front end, you can see it's much bigger. It looks very different than how it does in the approximate preview in the admin. So uh, header image, background image, those are a couple of the appearance settings that you would be managing uh, in the customizer or in the WP admin. Um, a couple other uh, parts of WordPress that you commonly need to manage are, well, first of all, the background image, header image, those are things that you may set up just one time when you first set up your site. So if you uh, do click that big blue button to go into the customizer to set those things, you may only need to do it one time because once you set those things up, how often are you gonna be changing the static front page of your blog? So, um, but there's other parts of WordPress that you need to manage a lot more often. Um, posts and pages, comments, those things you go and manage all the time. Um, also, menus and widgets are things that you commonly need to go in to manage, okay? And as you heard, uh, WordPress 4.3 added menus to the customizer. 
with a lot of controversy, I guess. Um, the admin page is still there. You can still go to the admin page, and you can do all the things you used to do there. It's still there. But you can go to the customizer optionally. But let me show you the impact that this has for users. So I'm going to show you uh, a demo of how using the admin page for menus would, uh, the steps that would be required to configure the menus in just the way that the user wants. I'm the user, but okay, just imagine I'm a novice. So I, I'm, I'm adding menu items uh, to this primary menu, and I don't like having uh, lines wrapped here uh, on my theme, my design, let's say. So I want to just add some ellipses to the text so that when I go to the front end, I'm not seeing it wrap, okay? So to do that, I need to first add it, and then I save, then I go to the front end, then I see if it worked, then I go back to the back end, and then I want to add some submenu items as well. And so I add those there, and then I drag them into place, and, um, and then I'll save, and then I'll have to go back to the front end, see how they look, notice that, oh, they're all wrapping, I don't like that, it looks horrible in my perspective, I guess. And so then I gotta go back to the menus admins page, I gotta open those back up, I gotta add the ellipses, try to remember which ones wrapped and where they wrapped, and it's just very slow, and throughout this whole time, visitors are visiting your site, and they're seeing this menu look in a way that you think is horrible because you don't like wrapping, okay? It's just an example, obviously. Um, so, but there could be a more problematic example, like if you have a, if you want to add multiple nested submenus, but the theme doesn't support that, and it could end up being that you accidentally added submenu items when it wasn't supported, and then it breaks. So, but the only way to check to see how it looks is to save and then go to the front end and then to see those changes. So. Now, you, can, you get the idea. So let's go now to what that same experience in the customizer. So here, as you, hopefully you've tried, and if you go into the customizer, you go into menus, you can add the menu items right there in the customizer, and you can see a live preview of what that looks like. You can see right away, oh, that's wrapping. You can add the truncate it where you want so it doesn't wrap. And then I can add the submenu items right there and likewise add the wrapping, add the ellipses so that it wraps, it doesn't wrap at all. And all this is done immediately, you can see a preview and because this is in the customizer, nothing has been saved yet. All, done, everything done in the preview, everything done in the customizer, just like everything done in Vegas stays in Vegas, everything done in the customizer stays in the customizer until you hit this save and publish button. So you can do whatever you want in here, anything, and visitors to your site aren't gonna see any of those changes until you hit save and publish. So you can, it's just, it's like a wonderland, a place to explore and, and <laughs> And just experiment, make mistakes, just like Miss Frizzle from Magic School Bus, you know, get messy, make mistakes, get dirty. So the customizer is your playground to do that. Uh, in the same way, widgets were added in WordPress 3.9, which uh, was the first major feature added to the customizer uh, since its inception. And uh, as with menus, the widgets admin page is still there. You can still go there to manage your widgets if you want. But I want to show that it's a far superior experience to do that in the customizer. So here uh, I'm going to show using the admin page to manage your widgets as you had to do before Word WordPress 3.9. So here I'm going to add a couple text widgets. And because this uh, this user, myself, I, let's say I don't know HTML, or I'm, I'm very easy with typos. So here I'm going to add some HTML to this text widget. And you can't see because of the resolution of this monitor, but I made a typo. 
And you can see I accidentally made all the text on the home page red. So then to fix the mistake, I just have to go back into the admin page, find the mistake, save it, and then go back to see if I fixed it. And all that during that time, uh, I may, the visitors will have been visiting the site and they will see the web, the homepage not displaying in the way that you want. So in, there's another example, but I'll show you the effect here. Um, in the customizer, you do the same thing. And as I said, everything done in the customizer stays in the customizer until you hit save and publish. So you add a text widget, you add that same markup, and as you're entering the content, you see the results in the preview. So you can see right away that, oh, I have a mistake here. I better fix it before I hit save and publish. And you can see I'm realizing my mistake and then I'm fixing the markup, and then now it's appearing properly. So then and the other example is you get some third-party uh, HTML that you need to paste into a text widget. And in this example, uh, if I didn't fully copy it properly, I have a div mismatch, and so then it basically clears out everything above the fold. So then I can see that right away that I made, made a mistake, and I add that missing div back in there, and it looks just the way I like. Same publish, and instantly, people who are visiting the site see it just that way. All those changes that I made happen at, together at once. It's not one by one by one. Uh, one, uh, one of the uh, reasons, or I guess models behind the widgets and the customizer feature was to stop editing your widgets blind, which is what the widgets admin page meant you had to do. You had no way of previewing those changes Everything you did in the widgets admin page would hopefully work, but you didn't know for sure. And uh, I don't know, uh, a way around this that some use still is to have a staging site, so uh, like a sandbox site, even on your local environment where you can test your widgets and you can make sure that it is um, going to look the way you want. And then you carefully document all those steps and then you push the code up to production, and then you carefully retrace all your steps. You hope you got it all right, and then you have to go back to the admin page, and then you go back to the front end to make sure you did it right. If you didn't do it right, you got to go back and make your, fix your mistakes. Basically, this is the this workflow is why you have to be up at 2 a.m. in the morning to push your changes live because you could be breaking the site, and you don't want people to see that. But with the customizer, everything done in the customizer is there only for your preview until you hit save and publish. So instead of having 10 steps, you've got to frantically click, 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 click as fast, fast as you can so that people aren't seeing broken site. You can just do it all, take, take your time, you know, listen to some music, you know, do whatever you want. And then once you're happy, save and publish, and it's all there. You can do it at lunchtime when you get the most traffic. Another uh, <laughs> meme that we worked up for widgets in the customizer. <coughs> you don't have to be the most interesting developer in the world. You can use the customizer and test your widgets in production without worrying about breaking your site. So the customizer is a framework for live previewing any change in WordPress. It's not just how you set the colors. It's not just about how you change an image, it's any change. By default, it was just colors and these lesser impacting settings, but it can live preview anything. And that's why more recently we're not calling it the theme customizer anymore, it's just customizer, because it can be used to manage anything, widgets, menus, and others. So now I want to talk about some of the applications and extensions that uh, I've been working on at XWP and the things that are being worked on for core for the future as well and get you more excited about the customizer. Uh, one thing is uh, a plugin which I call contextual settings. And um, 
This is a client project, it's not yet public. Um, but it, it builds on widgets in the customizer and, and kind of takes that to an extreme scale. So you can see for this uh, news website, you can see the homepage has a lot of content on it, a lot of different modules, a lot of different stories being shown. And everything here you see is built with widgets and sidebars. And it's not just the homepage, it's every single index page of the site. So you can see here in the customizer, uh, you would access the widgets panel and then go in to manage those widgets. And we organize the sidebars so that there's the right-hand rail, main content, and then there's a footer down here, and a couple other widget areas that are used sometimes. So then going into managing those widget areas, you can see in the main content area, we have this widget called a query posts widget, which is basically like the WordPress loop. You know, you have the basic WordPress template is just a while loop that does the title, the title, the title, the title, the title, and just uses whatever is the query for that request. So if you're at slash category slash Halloween, it's going to show all the posts from the, cal the Halloween category. So we have a query post widget that just basically takes whatever was the query for that page and then loops over all the posts and outs outputs them in a, in a template according to the theme. And as I said, the, it uses the global query. So if you navigate around to a category page or author page or home page, it's going to show the posts that are specific to that URL that you're on. And then we have, in the right-hand rail, we have widgets that are more commonly shared across multiple URLs. So that's all pretty standard. The unique thing here for contextual settings is this, what you see, these checkboxes here. Now, it's, the UI isn't, isn't that great here, but the idea, I think, is sound, where in, in WordPress 4.0, we added the concept of contextual controls to customizers. So you, as a developer, can say that this control, which manages this certain setting, is only applicable on the home page, so that you only see that control if you're on the home page. Um, well, this takes that same concept and applies it to settings, so that the value of the settings in the customizer can basically be forked can vary by which page you're on. So we've taken that here and have applied it to the main content and the right-hand rail sidebar area. So each request can have different widgets in those sidebars. Uh, so then if you are, say, on the Halloween category page query request, URL, you can go into Customizer, navigate to that, that URL in the preview, and then click Contextualize to the current query, and then you can add widgets to that, that sidebar, and those widgets will then only be displayed when you're on that category page. So in this way, you can have default widgets that appear across the entire site, but then you can override the widgets that appear on specific requests. And to get a peek into how that works uh, in the back end, uh, these contextualized settings have a post type. And you can see by looking at them that they, have, that they relate to specific queries. And looking inside that, the underlying data that's stored when you contextualize a widget area for a given request, it will basically, it'll just override the value for that given uh, setting. So you can see 
on the Meetup Top Stories page. I have contextualized it, overridden the value to be just a single query post widget for that request. And because it is a uh, post type, custom post type, it automatically gets revisions. So now I can see over time who's made changes to the Meta Top Stories page. I can see that previously it had four widgets in the main content area, but the most recent revision changed that so that now there's just one widget. So then I can go back and revert too, so I can restore the old widgets that were there. Uh, as I said, uh, this, this project I've been working on, is, it takes widgets to a, or widgets in the customizer to an extreme scale. Um, so we have, we're using uh, widgets to build out the entire site, and there are literally, literally thousands of widgets on the site. And this has revealed some scalability problems in the customizer and with widgets in general. And so part of one of the focuses of the 4.4 release has been performance in the customizer, improving the time to load the customizer, the time to refresh the preview. And so a lot of those changes have gone into core out of learning about the performance bottlenecks that are in widgets in the customizer because of this project. And then also this plugin, Customize Widgets Plus, is kind of a, a staging ground for features that, are, that may go into core at some point. But it, this implements the uh, feature where instead of storing widgets in options, it'll store widgets in, in a custom post type. So each widget instance will be shown in the admin as a separate post and we'll have revision history just like the contextualized settings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It may only work in trunk though. You may have or beta for uh, 4.4 beta one. So the impact of widgets in the customizer for for me and my clients uh, has been that the customizer provides a a a site build tool with drag and drop through widgets live preview, and all using core features in WordPress. Without having to build a whole new interface, we just reuse what's already there in WordPress. And so uh, using widgets, it, it's, there's been talk of the content blocks in WordPress before, and by really, in a lot of, there's tons of uh, plugins that add new widgets to your WordPress site, and so, um, by using the widget as a core building block for building out your site, you can easily add whole new modules and, and things to build your site with just by adding new plugins. So it's very flexible. But uh, you may be concerned about, another complaint about the customizer is the lack of room you know, in the customizer pane, pane on the left. It's very constrained space, right? And and so um, you may be feeling cramped in the customizer because there's a lack of controls, a lack of space for the controls. So it's a valid concern, but we get something for free uh, because of the constrained space. It works automatically on mobile. It's mobile friendly from the beginning, right? So that's kind of, it was accidental, I think, that it worked out that way. But there are strategies for getting more elbow room in the customizer. If you set the site icon, which is a new feature in WordPress 4.3, uh, it'll open a modal in the customizer. Or if you set the header image, so you get all the space you want, full screen. Also, that's in core, that's, yeah, you can have that with widgets too. And another solution to get more elbow room in the customizer is to shift over the preview, so with with widgets and with the menu menus in the customizer, we have this pane that slides out. 
So we have some more room to work with to select something. This is, is not as uh, baked into core to implement on your own, but you can do it. And you can also expand controls over the preview. This is in core. Uh, the, uh, it's not often seen, but widgets have the ability to specify a larger width for the, the default. So if you open a certain widget in the widgets admin page, it'll kind of hang out to the left because it's a wide widget. And those are supported in the customizer. And when you add a wide widget, instead of expanding downward, it can expand outward over the preview. So here you can see this widget implements like a post editor interface, and it's all right there in the customizer uh, overflowing the um, preview. And the, uh, uh, the fourth option here for getting more elbow room, which is I think the most exciting, is inline editing. And this is often known as front-end editing as well in Customizer or in WordPress. So um, there is a, another plugin called Customize Inline Editing, which is a proof of concept which you can extend to add inline editing to your own settings and your themes and plugins. It, I'll show you a demo here. It allows you to, this plugin still has the settings exposed in controls in the customizer, but you can shift click on certain elements in the preview and then edit them in line. And you can see as you make those changes in the preview that they show up live in the customizer pane. So you're not having to work in that constrained space. And it works both ways. And you can even collapse the pane entirely and work without having that getting in the way. Does that work on pages? Mm-hmm. <coughs> if you add, you mean edit the post content? What's that? Edit the post content? Yeah. Uh, you can add support for that. It doesn't do that out of the box, though. So. Okay. But in regards to posts, um, well, so this, this uh, prototype here, customized inline editing, is a kind of a stepping ground, stepping stone for a, a goal we have in the customizer roadmap, which is to have seamless loading of the customizer into the front end. So if you see the admin bar on your site, that means you're logged in, right? And that includes certain things uh, for logged in users. Well, we can also bootstrap the customizer into the front end. So one of the problems with, with a customizer, a complaint that I have is when you go click customize, it takes you to another page, reloads everything, and now you're at customize.php, right? That's not great. We should be, you should be on the front end, you should be able to click customize, and then immediately the controls slide in, and you can start editing things just like, uh, like you were in the customizer already. So one of the Solutions for that is inline editing. And in regards to posts, uh, there's another prototype plugin called Customize Posts, which uh, brings post editing into the customizer. So you may say, well, posts already have a preview, right? You can edit your post, you click preview, right? And then it opens the preview in a new window and you can see what it's gonna look like, kind of. The, um, first of all, it opens in a new window so you don't see the changes you're making as you're making them. Okay, that's one thing. But also, there are other limitations. Uh, and specifically, the featured image. Uh, I didn't know this until like a year ago, but if you set your featured image in WordPress in a, in when you're editing a post, that actually updates the featured image immediately, even before you hit save it'll set it immediately, even before you've had a chance to preview it. So you could accidentally change the featured image and then visitors to your site will see that featured image before you think they would. And you can't preview uh, a change to a featured image. Also, page template, if you're editing a page in the page editor, 
and you change the page template to something else, and you click Preview, that different page uh, template will not be shown in the preview. You can't preview that change using the, the post editor, uh, the page preview feature. And then likewise, custom fields and meta boxes that plugins add, those all can't be previewed either. If you actually, um, if, you, if you make a change to a custom field and you click preview, it'll actually save those before it, it it'll save those, those custom fields um, even though it's not saving the post content. So you'll accidentally save those custom fields when you're not expecting to. But all of those things can be previewed in the customizer. So this, this customized post plugin is just a proof of concept. It's not in any way uh, a refined user experience, but it adds all the controls for editing post fields right there in the customizer pane. <coughs> and you can set the featured image, you can change the page template, you can modify custom fields, and you can see what impact those are gonna have. Maybe you have a custom field that you don't know what it does. Well, with this plugin, you can go and make a change, you can see what impact it's gonna have. And so using custom customizer as the framework for live previewing any change in WordPress, you can build upon it to build a front-end editing experience and to give that live preview experience that, that eliminates the save and surprise experience that users have. Another feature, last feature I want to talk about is transactions. And this is a little more I guess technical, the, the name at least, and there's a blog post on MakeCore about it, but um, like I said, uh, when you make changes in, we're in the customizer, everything you do in the customizer stays in the customizer until you hit save and publish. But that is actually annoying too because you could be making changes and then you need to, you lose power or you um, need to uh, go home from the office and go back and continue with the next day. You can't save those changes as a draft. And you can't pick them up later because it's all stored in memory in the browser. So uh, the and, and you have to it only go live once you hit uh, save and publish. So one of the things that that we're looking at is is The order here is a little messed up. I'll just go to the end here. So with transactions, you would be able to draft all the settings changes that you're making and store them in WordPress as a, in the background as a, as a transaction post. And then you could come back to them later. You could schedule those settings to go live. So like I said, you um, in WordPress now, frequently you're up in the middle of the night. If you're on a highly traffic site and you need to make a bunch of changes, and you don't want visitors to see those changes bef uh, at the high traffic time, well, you can say, um, make a bunch of changes in the customizer, and with transactions, you could s um, bundle up all those settings and schedule them to go out like a Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. And you wouldn't have to be involved at all on your day off. And you could also uh, schedule, you can also dra draft those settings and then share them with your superior to then approve and publish. So you could have uh, editorial workflow within the customizer as well. And you can have a revision history, so you could track the changes that are made in the customizer over time. And uh, transactions would also allow you to share your state with unauthenticated users. So if someone doesn't even have a WordPress account, you could share the preview state with them and they could see the changes and sign off on them before you hit publish. And lastly, uh, transactions open a, a way for the customizer to be integrated with the REST API, which everybody's excited about. And I hope now that you too are excited about the customizer and if uh, you've been wary about it up until now, 
Uh, the customizer was designed to eliminate the save and surprise experience in WordPress, but I hope you were surprised uh, today with what the customizer can do for you. Is there a way to uh, like integrate the customizer preview from within like the admin dashboard? Like you could, you know what I mean? So like you go to your widgets page and instead of like immediately saving, you could just put it into like a you know preview mode and like preview my changes before you publish them. Uh, or yeah, Eric Lewis, who's a core contributor, he's been looking at at ways of making the preview more extensible to allow it to be embedded like in the admin or other places so that you don't have to necessarily go into the customizer experience to use the customizer features. So that's kind of taking the customizer to the next step where at first it was you go to the customizer, but now we're looking at making it more modular so that you can reuse components of other places. Yeah, but you can't do that right now very easily. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, it's not to bring up the ugly competitive name of Drupal, but it seems like this is moving towards an area where like the customizer is more for the user to fiddle with in pre preview and things like in dashboard appearance and then all the settings under appearance is more for uh, us developers and such or people who are maintaining sites for people. Is the ultimate goal in core is to make this so that maybe we could shut off some things that we don't want the user to get into and just direct them to just keep using the customizer? Well, actually, the, the header image and background image, if you try to access those from the admin menu, they actually do take you now to the customizer instead because it's a much better experience. So. Be because you can get a live preview and <laughs> because you get a true preview of what it actually looks like, okay? But it is still there. You can restore the links if you, if you know how. But by default, it will now take you to the customizer. Um, and there have been discussions about uh, one of the complaints about the current work in the customizer is only some things are available in the customizer. Everything else is in the admin page, right? So users don't know where do they go, right? And the problem is there's not enough man or person hours to put everything in the customizer in one release, day. right? <laughs> yeah, contributor day. Um, so yeah, the WP admin, I guess, is better for advanced users who know what kind of a change is, what kind of an impact a change is going to have. But even for me, um, I feel more comfortable doing it in the customizer because I can actually see what the effect is going to be before I hit uh, save and publish. So with everything you just said, are there still plans for eliminating the appearance menu and just calling it customizer or are we still going to have both choices? Yeah, I... I think that customizer should be bumped up to the top of the admin menu. Um, there's there's a backwards compatibility concern with that because some plugins will be trying to add menu items underneath appearance, and so that is something that could happen eventually. But I think appearance, well, and for that matter, uh, widgets and menus, I don't think make any sense under appearance either. So I think widgets and menus should be moved out from that as well, because they're not appearance, they're content, really. So. Thank you. I use a plugin called TinyMCE, and it, uh, it allows me to edit my widgets without using HTML code so I can put in pictures and I can put in links and make the colors red or the or the uh, font red or whatever without putting in HTML code into that widget. Um, however, it only works when I go to widgets. It doesn't work in the customizer at all. 
So, question. Are we going to make that something that's available in the customizer or keep it separate? Tiny MCE should be able to work in the customizer. Um, it's just that plugin may not be, and most plugins should work out of the box in the customizer, but there may be something specifically about how that widget is built that makes it not work in the customizer. That could be something that's fixed in core and improve back compatibility, but uh, if you shared the plugin with me, I could probably look at what's wrong there. We don't have two mics, do we? Yeah, just throw it. <laughs> yeah, this is a nice mic. Thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about how the customizer works with caching plugins that might be installed? That's always been an update um, issue. So the question is regarding caching plugins in the customizer. The customizer, the way customizer works is it, the preview will be refreshed with a post request. So technically the caching plugin shouldn't be activated in that context. And widgets in the customizer are, they should be written in a way that they don't cache their output in the customizer context. So a caching plugin should still work. Sorry. Okay. So at the last piece, you showed how it might be moving into a custom post type thing where you could have multiple revisions and you could come back on a different day and work on that. And my concern about that is to ask you is the same thing about when you're doing a post and let's just say you've written and you've written and now you have all of these post revisions and eventually any site that does a lot gets bogged down by those and you have to clean them out in the database. You know, I could probably use that customizer and have, you know, like a hundred revisions if I'm really designing a site, you know? And so how would you handle that? Yeah, the revisions, they can be garbage collected uh, after a certain amount of time. Um, it doesn't right now, but that would be a feature that'd be easy to add to have a scheduled task that runs in the background that will clear out revision. And, and actually in core, there's a constant that indicates the maximum number of revisions that you keep for a given post, I believe. So that would also apply to, to these as well. All right, thank you. Everybody thank Weston.